So tell me about some of the trends that are happening in commercial real estate right now, given the economic environment that we're in. Great question. You would think that because of some of these external conditions or the circumstances that, that we're in, you would think that there would be a downward trend mm. in real estate in general. And right. when, uh, you know, not saying that there are not certain segments of the market that have suffered, right? And that is being adversely impacted. But overall, um, <laughs> the market is actually pretty good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So one of the gentlemen who have been very good to me, helped me, advised me along the way. And one of the things that Billy said to me when we were discussing about when he likes to buy investment real estate, mm -hmm. said, I don't buy until there's blood in the streets. Right? Uh, yeah. And yeah, Rothschild. I, yeah, right. <laughs> right. Uh, it, it, that, yeah, it was made yeah. famous by Rothschild. Yeah. Yes. I spoke to him about a month, month and a half ago. I said, hey, are you ready to buy? There's blood in the streets. He said, not yet. Blood's not thick enough yet. <laughs> like I said, there are certain segments of the market that are adversely impacted. Regardless of whether the market is going, is, is up or down, mm -hmm. there are always investors who are willing to put their money in to something within investment real estate. One of the things that, that we've seen uh, in the marketplace is that because of the, I don't want to use the word abatement, but the stop gap measures on evicting tenants that's been enacted by, by governments, both local and state, is that landlords who own multifamily assets you know, may not have been able to collect rents for the last couple of months or so. And once that period ends, I think that is when you will begin to see a shift in the status of those assets, right? So, you know, if, if the landlord isn't paying the bank, he's not paying his mortgage, right. you know, uh, he's, he's probably going to um, have to figure out some way to not lose his asset. But if, if you get enough tenants not paying, listen, it's like anything else, the larger REITs and investment firms are able to carry themselves through times like these, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the small time right. investor, the mom and pop investors, right? Are most likely the ones who are going to be adversely affected by, by this crisis. In terms of commercial properties, there's a pretty big shift happening of people working from home and things like that. Is that part of the, the real estate sector adversely impacted at all? Like what's gonna happen with all these large buildings that are now suddenly emptying out? It's a great question. You know, one of the things that I've learned, mm -hmm. I feel like there are certain transactions that I'm involved with, uh, certain deals I've brokered, um, where I feel like it's worth a semester at like Harvard or Wharton, the wow. kind of education I get, right? Right, I mean, right, and you get it real world, yeah. I, you get it real world, and there's been a few times, Mark, where I've had to lick my wounds, <laughs> you know, because I got beat up so bad, right? right. Um, that's a great question. One of the things that I've realized about real estate and business people, real estate investors mm -hmm. and business people, the, when you let the free market do what the free market does, mm -hmm. right? People will usually are very creative in coming up with ways to reposition those assets, mm -hmm. right? That's and I true. find that to be very commonplace among, you know, a, a lot of mid-tier investors, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there was a time, Mark, you know, certainly, well, <laughs> maybe when we were small children, you know, <laughs> when, you know, one of a very prominent business or as part of the trades, I guess you can say to some degree was people who would install uh, telephone antennas. I'm sorry, not telephone, TV antennas. Sure. Right. On people's houses. Right. And that was before cable and satellite TV exploded. Right. right? No one in, in the 1960s, 70s, or early 80s would have ever thought 
that business would be non-existent. Right. 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 So just as how those people who would normally have that job and consider it to be a, a stable and secure source of income for them and their families, right? That job no longer exists. Okay. Right. But right. that that same person, whether it's male or female, may now, you know, have a job in the field, um, maybe like a, um, a a first or second tier technology professional. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the potential problem of having these large spaces vacant, right? I'm fairly confident that a lot of these landlords and owners will be able to come up with something to kind of fill that void, you know? And another thing too, let me mention this before I forget. Sure. sure. You know, when you take like a wire house, for example, right? Merlin, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan Chase. Yeah. They might occupy, you know, in the central business district of a major city, they might occupy, I don't know, 50,000 square feet on maybe three or four floors, mm-hmm. right? Maybe even more. Now, because of this pandemic, right? Mm-hmm. If and when their employees come back to the office, right? They yeah. then have to have glass, you know, installed right. and, you know, all these measures to kind of separate people. What's happening or what may happen is that instead of having 50,000 square feet in one building, they Mm -hmm. might only take 30,000 square feet because if someone is equally or even more productive working from home, okay, if that person has to drive in to work or commute one hour to and from work every day, Mm -hmm. right, it (laughs) might be more advantageous for them to stay home. Sure or take an office space, lease out an office, a smaller space uh, closer to their home uh, if you know, it's, it's determined that it's better for them to go into an office. So they might be giving up 20,000, 30,000 square feet in one place, but they may take a smaller space at a different location mm-hmm. away from that central business district, which really would be more cost effective for them anyway, because yeah. it would be less. Do you see a migration of people heading out of cities? I I, I hear that. I hear that these days. Yes. Businesses included? Yes. You know, I forgot who it was. I I heard a quote one time from a foreign (sighs) leader of a different country said that part of the problem with America is that it builds these great cities and then leave them. Mm. Right. So given the circumstances that we're now dealing with, yeah, people are migrating from the city out to the suburbs or more rural areas, yeah. right? Unfortunately, this also, you know, when you're talking about the residential um, part mm-hmm. of, of our business, um, house, uh, house values have significantly increased in the suburbs outside of right. major cities. Right. You know, incredible, incredible. So until this crisis passed, and I, I think it will, I believe it will, I, it, it's probably going to get worse before it gets better, right? But I think this crisis will pass, and the United States of America is the safest place anyone can invest their money in, especially when it comes to dirt, right? <laughs> because who doesn't like to own dirt, right? I get it's it. The yep, absolutely. That you, you can have. Yep. Um, <laughs> I, I had a uh, intern working, working for me yep. for a while. Her family is from Saudi Arabia, hmm. right? And she would tell me that a member of the Saudi royal family drove by a piece of land that he really liked, mm-hmm. right? That was owned by her uncle. And the guy was like, I want that piece of land. And he goes and he, take, he takes it, right? Unbelievable. Wow. I said, well, you can't do that here. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> you know, um, so uh, the United States is, with the exception of what we're dealing with now, is probably one of the safest places in the world. We are a large country. There's so many different facets to our nation. Right. And when it comes to investment, we are where most people would like to put their money. 
Mm -hmm. you no, know, so yeah. I believe that's a tremendous value, and I believe that you'll see values increase when this crisis passes.